And finally, to our special segment, Resurgent Africa. Amid the coups and the crises, there are many positive stories from Africa that often get overlooked, but not on this show. Our story today is from Kenya, where an organization is bringing the power of virtual reality to impoverished rural areas of the country. The man behind the project says that he is not just helping the youth experience the world of VR, but also helping locals make a living through technology. Can this project ignite a tech revolution in rural Kenya? Our next report has all the details. With wide smiles on their faces and hearts full of excitement, these students carried cardboard boxes from a vehicle to their village hall. Inside these boxes was something these youngsters had neither seen nor heard of. As they sat on the floor in rows and were handed white-colored tech devices, they didn't know what to expect. So the organizer, Paul Simon Wayaki Wahinga, explained how to use the devices. Once they dived in, they were teleported to another world. Wayaki's organization is bringing the power of virtual reality to youth in remote Kenyan villages. And this group of youngsters in Kenya's Kiambu experienced the world of VR for the first time. This is my first time to see a VR set. I'm so amazed by the many opportunities uh, and I look forward to the future knowing that I will earn a living through it. And I've seen that I can also travel from to another country when I'm still in Africa. That is so wonderful and I'm so amazed. I can actually see the space and all the stars. Yeah, that's a very good thing. The lack of technological know-how in Kenya's rural areas pushed Wayaki to take up this project, where he teaches locals all about virtual reality technology via hands-on sessions. He carries boxes full of futuristic goggles to impoverished communities. He says technology will bring stories of these rural communities to the metaverse, which otherwise would never come out. Not just that, Wayaki says technology would bring economic empowerment and financial wellness to communities struggling to survive in rural areas. Africa VR Campus and Center is an organization that is dedicated to training VR, XR, AR, but not in shiny workshops and urban areas, but in the grassroots rural Africa, where we come with our gadgets, uh, internet solutions, and we connect the community and train them what is VR, XR, AR. And the reason why we do for so, of course, is for socioeconomic empowerment. Because they too have stories to tell in the metaverse. They too have got their own local grassroots industries that can be you know, incorporated in the metaverse. And that brings economic empowerment and financial awareness to them. Sort of uh, come, uh, bringing the sustainable development goals closer to them using the power of VR, XR and AR. But Waiaki's path has many hurdles. Some villages don't have the infrastructure or internet coverage to host his sessions. Moreover, locals in many communities see the new technology as strange and suspicious. Despite this, he's determined to move forward. Taking new tech in rural Africa has its own set of challenges. Uh, we are talking about infrastructure challenges, internet challenges, sometimes even the community looking at this new tech like, what is this? And so the absorption of it sometimes becomes a hindrance in when you're trying to take it to the grassroots. And so all these sort of challenges and sometimes even the funding to even take this out, you know, outreach to the villages sometimes is not there. After a short training session on virtual reality and other technologies, those interested are given an opportunity to join Wayaki's team. This allows many of the youth in rural areas to start making a living. I have been in Metaverse for three years in Waiyaki's program. So I personally, it has benefited me a lot since we have gone to universities to teach students how to use it. Since we are only from four leavers, I feel special and I feel that I am an important girl. Also, it has also mentored me because I've learned a lot of things. I also earn a living there when we go to an event. We get paid and it helps me to do to buy things that I don't have. Experts in the field are lauding the efforts made by Waiaki's organization. They say while it's a good start, young Kenyans also need training to make VR content themselves if they want to fully experience the economic benefits. 
I think going to the slums and demystifying the value of the technology is a start. It's a very good start. Um, it's very important for you to reduce the mental sort of uh, barriers of, to entry of the technology by doing that. But of course, it has to also be accompanied by different strategies. For instance, just talking about it is not enough. Training individuals on how they can be able to create the content, not just consuming it. Because it's important for these individuals to understand that this technology is highly, um, it can change our lives in so very many ways, whether or not looking at it as a social dimension or economical dimension. And I feel for the young people on a grassroots level, it's very important for them to also be given the tools to build the technology. While that may seem to be a distant dream, Waiaki and his team don't see it as an impossible one. For now, they are sowing the seeds of a tech transformation in rural Kenya and the benefits will be reaped by the country's future generations. First Post decodes the U.S. election. Explains how America chooses its president. Your primer on the race to the White House. Everything you need to know about how America votes and its global implications. U.S. Election Explained, every Monday and Thursday only on First Post.